Hey guys, and welcome back to part three of this Life S5 build series. Uh, today we're going to talk about design goals and setting up crossover simulation software to figure out a, a, a crossover for these speakers. First, I want to cover design goals because I've been blowing through the build process and driver testing and stuff like that and haven't really taken the time to talk about what I'm trying to ch achieve with these speakers. So, uh, as the first video kind of implied, these are going to be for desktop use. A couple of the design goals I had in mind were that um, they got to be affordable. That's kind of the number one thing because the market is full of speakers like this. When I look around the market, I see speakers that are about $100 to $200 each easy that fit into this kind of size category. So I wanted to stick to a budget that was $100. I wanted to try and undercut the competition with what I was doing here to actually save money and get a superior product in the end. Um, so I set a budget of about $100 per speaker and so far with parts I'm about $50 per speaker into this. So, so, so far I'm doing pretty well I think. I've managed to use scraps and things like that. So even if you were to add my materials I think I can still buy crossover parts um, without going over budget. The second goal was also a little bit obvious. The size. They had to be a reasonable size that would fit onto a desktop and not feel too big or crowded. So in the end, I went with something that was seven and a quarter inches wide, 11 and a half inches tall, and nine inches deep. And this gave me something that I felt was a very good size for most any desktop. The third thing I wanted from these speakers is they had to sound good. Why would I spend all this money and time to build something that sounds just as good as what you can buy at the store? That seemed like a waste to me when there's so many options already out there. So it had to sound good. With a desktop speaker, I want a very low crossover point between the tweeter and the woofer. This is to do with the spacing between the drivers and how close the listener is. Usually we're only a meter, a meter and a half away. So really, I wanted a low crossover, which I'll explain in a future video. And the drivers, I wanted them to be close together. To get good sound, I also didn't want to just use online measurements or the you know some kind of crossover calculator. I wanted to get good data myself and use software to simulate a crossover and test what the software gives us, listen to it, test again, simulate again, rinse, repeat, and get really good results. Okay, so now that we've covered the design goals, let's talk about setting up the software because guys, I got a really kind of cool idea, at least I think it's cool. I don't know how it'll turn out if we'll get much involvement, but what I'm hoping to do is show you how to set up the software. Um, I'm going to use XSIM, but you're welcome to use whatever you want. And then I'd like, whether you're an expert or a beginner, I'd like you to try to come up with a crossover yourself and then email it to me. And then I will, in part four, I'll put the crossover together, I'll measure it, I'll provide some commentary and feedback on the crossover, how it performs and how useful it'll be for these uh, design goals that we just laid out. So if we do have lots of people interested, I won't be able to look at each and everybody's crossover. I will try to respond to everyone, but it may not make it into part four. If you do want to submit a crossover to me, please email it to ryan at impulseaudio.ca. Okay, let's set up the software. In order to set up the software correctly, I first need three measurements. I leave the speaker and microphone in the same position and I take a measurement of the woofer, the tweeter, and both of them wired in parallel. I then am able to find the acoustic center difference. So first let's take a look at the measurements that I got. Okay, here we have the tweeter in blue, the woofer in green. The combined response, like I said, the woofer and the tweeter in parallel is in red. And um, if they look a little bit different, it's because I measured a meter away this time. And then that magenta purple colored line there is actually, I just quickly wired up a uh, 1 millihenry and 10 microfarad, you know, first order crossover just to see what I would get. And I can use this for comparison once I have my acoustic center in XM, I can plug in these values and just see how, how well the system is working. Um, obviously it's a bad crossover, I just threw it together, but it at least gives me something to, to start with to see if things are operating the way they should. Okay, now with those measurements in mind, we can open XM and start loading those files into XM to use the software to find the acoustic difference. Here we go. 
Okay, so I have both drivers here. I'm going to load the uh, driver files that you can download from Dropbox. I'll provide a link in the description where you can get these driver files, but I include it in all my test videos as well. We load the files, which you've seen me do before, and also check out my tutorial on XSIM. I walk through this a little bit slower uh, or in more detail. I'm going to name the drivers as well, just for clarity here. Okay, then I'm going to add that overlay, that combined tweeter and woofer in parallel measurement. Um, this measurement won't be available to you, um, but you don't actually need it. I'm just showing you the process I go through. Okay, and then I'm going to derive the phase from each of these driver files. So I tune the driver, click derive, and this window pops up. You're going to want to use the same settings I do, but we'll cover that uh, in the next portion of the setup here. So I'm just telling the, um, because there's noise floor, you can see down around 100 hertz, the noise floor takes over the measurement, and I don't measure beyond 20 kilohertz, so um, you just kind of have to tell the software what it would look like. So I did that for the tweeter, and I'm going to do that for the woofer as well. Like I say, the, um, the time windowing kind of screws up the low end of the measurement. So I know from my near field measurement, if you saw that in the part 2B video, it rolls off about 9 dB per octave, and the top end I can just mimic uh, extending out. So now I have minimum phase for each of these drivers, and I know the woofer is behind the tweeter in this case, so I'm going to add with delay, and uh, this is basically distance. Um, so I'm adding distance between the woofer and the tweeter, or I do this until I get the lines mostly agreeing with each other. And you can see when I go past 0.65 inches, uh, things start to look a little off. And when I go below 0.65 inches, things also look a little bit off. So I'm going to settle on 0.65 inches for being the acoustic offset in this case. Okay, so now we know the acoustic offset is 0.65 inches. So with that in mind, we can now open XM fresh and load the files exactly as you would do from this point on. So I've already done that work. You don't need to worry about that so much, especially if you're a beginner and you just want to load these files and play. Let me show you how to do that now. So starting with a fresh open XM, we can add two drivers. One of these is the tweeter and one of them is the woofer. We right click, tune, and we add those files from Dropbox. And as mentioned, I will provide a link in the description. We're just going to use sample one, but I would advise you to uh, work with sample one and then switch over to sample two and uh, work with sample two as well, just so you get a bit of a balance. Okay, now that the files are loaded, I am going to add the distance we talked about, 0.65 inches, and I am also going to derive minimum phase. You are going to want to use these settings that you see here, or at least very close to them. So 9 dB per octave on the low end, around 80 hertz, and we can go to about 15 kilohertz, 18 kilohertz, or thereabouts, and steepen up the roll off on this woofer because it basically dies right there. And again, this is just telling the software what happens above and below the bandwidth that the measurements are taken in. And on the tweeter, same thing, we're going to raise up the tail to about 200 hertz or so. And above 20 kilohertz, we're just going to uh, straighten things out because I know this is a fairly extended tweeter. Okay, now minimum phase is in check, and uh, the driver files are loaded, so we can hook everything up. We're going to add our grounds to the amplifier and to each driver, to the negative terminal of each driver. And I'm going to start adding components. I'm starting just with a second order filter, so that's cap and coil and coil and cap on the woofer. 
uh, just to get things started you can head off in any direction you like that's the point of this exercise is to play and learn all right with that information you are now equipped to download those files from Dropbox put them into XSIM or another software if you're comfortable and start coming up with a crossover design again I encourage you to email me a crossover design ryan at impulseaudio.ca at a minimum I will try to provide feedback and uh, possibly even cover it in, in part four. I'll use your crossover and wire it up and go through the process. If you haven't yet seen my XSIM tutorial, um, now would be a good time to watch that because it would be useful if you're a beginner and you're not sure what you're doing yet. It'd be uh, good to see that video to know what buttons to press and you know how to load files and things like that because I didn't really cover that in here. I just showed you how to set that up. You may even want to go watch that video and come back to the second part of this video to see the setup process again and what I did. Um, so anyways, you can get to that video by clicking on this link here and you can also subscribe to my channel right here to stay in touch for future parts of this series. Thanks guys for watching, we'll catch you later.